Hi, welcome to my talk. My name is Yu Zhe. I am a PhD student from UCLA. My current research focuses on building programming infrastructures for heterogeneous accelerator design. Today, I will walk you through our paper and exploit computational use for stencil accelerators. Seeing the title, you probably want to ask, what is stencil computation? Stencil computation is usually defined as a sliding window applied on an array, computing output according to a fixed local pattern. This slide shows a 5-point blur filter, which applies a star-shaped window to the input and produces the average at the output. If we apply a blur filter on an input image like this, we will get it blurred as the output. Stencil computation may seem simple to you. Let's see how people optimize it. There are mainly three aspects that are important for stencil optimizations. Parallelization, communication reuse, and computation reuse. The first two has been optimally solved by the SODA paper, which produces full data reuse with the minimum buffer size and scalable parallelism. However, the third aspect, computation reuse, has not been fully explored. You may be curious, how can computation be redundant? The most well-known computation reuse technique is called common subexpression elimination, which trades additional registers for operation reduction. In the example shown, A plus B can be reused at the cost of storing the result in an additional register. CIC is usually based on CDFG analysis of value numbering and it cannot eliminate all redundancy in stencil computation. Let's first look at an example. Going back to the five-point blur kernel, there is no redundancy if we look at each loop iteration. However, if we look at two different iterations, the stencil windows can overlap. In this example, the overlapping operands perform the same computation, which means they are redundant and can be reused. The problem is, how to eliminate such redundancy? Well, we can use an intermediate array by storing the intermediate result of the reusable operations. We can reduce the amount of computation. It may look simple to you and you may be wondering, what are the challenges? The challenges are twofold. One challenge is the large design space brought by the reduction operations. We have to determine a proper computation order of reduction operations. Otherwise, we won't be able to reuse the computation. The other challenge is the non-trivial trade-off between storage and computation. We need a way to quantize the storage overhead required by computation reuse with a concrete microarchitecture model. I'll first address how we explore the large design space. With a given computation order, the reduction expression can be represented using a binary tree. We first identify the computational operations as sub-expressions, which correspond to non-leaf nodes of the tree representation. To find all reusable operations, we apply normalization, which is defined as subtracting the least index from all indices, as shown in the slide. By doing this, we can easily identify operations that can be reused. Now we need to figure out how to determine the best computational order. A brute force approach would be to enumerate all possible orders and find the best. Such enumeration can be done via dynamic programming, since we can enumerate all n operand expressions by adding a new operand to all n minus 1 operand expressions. An obvious problem with ORDP is the scalability. It is super exponential. We propose a heuristic algorithm based on beam search, called HSBR. It is composed of three steps. The reuse discovery step enumerates pairs of operands as candidate common subexpressions. The candidate generation step reuses common subexpressions and generates new expressions as candidates. The iterative invocation step selects good candidates and iteratively invokes HSBR. I'll use the same five point blur example to demonstrate how HSBR works. Starting from the five operands, the reuse discovery step enumerates all pairs of operands and we'll find that x minus 1, 0 and x 0 minus 1 can be reused, which will be memorized for use in the next step. In the candidate generation step, 
Candidates are generated by replacing reusable operand pairs with a new symbol. In the iterative invocation step, HSBR tries to find reusable operands in the generated candidates. To make sure HSBR produces reasonably good quality of result and in a reasonable period of time, there are heuristics applied to select good operands and generate good candidates. For the details of the heuristics, please refer to our paper. This slide summarizes the computation reuse heuristics used in this work and the previous works. We can see that HSBR is the only one that can explore inter-iteration reuse, considers different computation orders of reduction operations, and selects operands in arbitrary directions. Now that we have heuristics to search the design space, we still need a proper metric to quantitatively characterize the storage computation trade-off. From the SODA paper, we know that the storage requirement, that is, the optimal communication reuse buffer size, is characterized by the total reuse distance. Reuse distance is defined as the distance between an array element's first and last use. However, the total reuse distance may not be a constant when there are intermediate stages. As an example, the left-hand side shows a stencil kernel that has a total reuse distance of 8 elements. On the right-hand side, the first stage of the same kernel is delayed by 2 elements. The output is not changed at all, but the total reuse distance is reduced from 8 to 6. We would like to use the minimum total reuse distance to characterize the storage requirement. To find the minimum total reuse distance, we formalize the problem as an SDC problem and use the solution to determine the relative relationship between the stages. The details can be found in our paper. This slide summarizes the stencil microarchitectures that can be used for computation reuse. Only our work provides both inter- and intrastage parallelism and optimal buffer allocation. Last but not least, let's look at some experimental results. This slide shows the performance boost for iterative stencil kernels. On average, no proposed HSPR algorithm achieves 2.3 times speed up over SODA, while a state-of-the-art work, DCMI, achieves 1.6 times. Moreover, thanks to the highly customized data paths and fully pipeline microarchitecture, HSPR outperforms multi-core Xeon Gold CPU by 10.9 times. Many core Xeon Phi processor by 3.2 times, and P100 GPU by 1.5 times on average, respectively. This slide summarizes the operation and resource reduction of DCMI and HSBR compared with SODA. We can see that HSBR reduces both point-wise and reduction operations, which eventually leads to 59% LUT usage reduction and 55% DSP usage reduction with only 24% more VRAM usage. Please feel free to view our paper for more details. In this paper, we present two computation reuse discovery algorithms. The dynamic programming algorithm finds optimal reuse for small kernels, while the heuristic-based algorithms are effective on large kernels. We also present an architecture-aware cost metric which helps us to minimize the storage overhead brought by computation reuse. Our work is open source. These are the references. Comments and questions are very welcome. Thank you.